The Rise and Fall of Anthony Gaspipe Castle While Anthony Castle was in the process of building a million dollar mansion in the Mill Basin area of Brooklyn after being made underboss of the Lucchese family, bodies were turning up all over New York City and even New Jersey. And according to the FBI, it was a trigger-happy Gaspipe Castle who was responsible. Castle would later go on to admit to cold-bloodedly murdering 36 people, which he alleges were all suspected of being federal informants, and admitted to ordering the murders of a hundred more people throughout his rise in the ranks of the Lucchese family, alongside his mentor Christopher Fenari and Fenari's 19th whole crew. At age 21, Anthony Castle would slowly start off his mob career for the Lucchese's as a loan shark and bookmaking enforcer under Fenari at the docks in Brooklyn, the place where Castle was one time said to have dropped a 500 pound cargo crate on a co-worker's foot because the man said he got new boots and Castle wanted to test out how durable the man's boots were, breaking most of his toes according to an unnamed detective, just to give you a little insight into Castle's deranged way of thinking. Born in 1942, Anthony Gaspipe Castle grew up on Union Street in Brooklyn, and as a kid, Castle was said to have rigged a silencer to a BB gun and would shoot the birds off the buildings and tenements in his neighborhood when he wasn't running around causing mayhem with his gang he called the South Brooklyn Boys. Castle had an uncle who was a member and captain of the Genovese family, but Gaspipe's father wasn't connected and instead made an honest living as a longshoreman and was said to have strongly urged a young Anthony Castle to stay away from the streets, even though Castle's father had a criminal record himself for multiple robberies he had committed back in the 1940s. And according to sources online, Castle gave himself the nickname Gaspipe because it was supposedly his father's favorite weapon to carry. Gaspipe would slowly be recruited by the Lucchese family at age 21, which at the time was the third biggest out of the five families in New York City, coming in behind the Gambinos and Genovese families. After starting at the docks in Brooklyn under Fenari, between 1965 and 1977, Gaspipe would go on to be arrested for state and federal charges, including heroin trafficking and assault with a gun, but would all end in the cases being dismissed after the witnesses would refuse to testify. Gaspipe would quickly rise up in the Lucchese family, officially becoming a made man, and in 1979, he was said to have been made alongside fellow Lucchese member, Vittorio Little Vicar Musso, who was later described as the Deadly Don by AUSA Charles Rose because of his bloody and deadly reign as boss of the Lucchese family, having one of the longest runs out of all the five families dating back to 1987. Amuso and Castle together would go on to be a lethal combination. It was said to have been running gambling rackets, trafficking drugs, and extorting truck drivers and construction contractors for labor union peace. The two men, along with members of the 19th Hole crew, would go on to create their own burglary ring of safe crackers, calling themselves the Bypass Gang, and were said to have stolen about $100 million by the end of the 1980s. In December of 1985, John Gotti would put the hit in motion against Big Paul Castellano, and he, along with his bodyguard Thomas Bellotti, would be shot down outside Sparks Steakhouse, leaving Genovese boss Vincent the Chin Giganti furious with John Gotti, and was said to have turned to Castle to seek retribution against the Dapper Don, leading to the car bombing of Frank DeChico and another man mistaken as John Gotti. Following the racketeering conviction of Lucchese boss Anthony Corallo being sentenced to 100 years, he appointed Vicar Musso boss of the family, who made Gaspipe conciliary, making Castle feel invincible, killing anyone even suspected of being an informant. Castle also had the famous mob cops Louis Eppolito and Stephen Caracappa on his payroll for $4,000 a month to not only feed him information on indictments coming down, and investigations opening up, but was even said to have killed eight people for Gaspipe Castle during his run with the Lucchese's. Eventually in 1990, Castle would be promoted to underboss and is said to have murdered 17 different people by 1991. In May of 1990, Castle's mob cops informed him of a racketeering indictment coming down 
by a Brooklyn federal court sending gas pipe and little Vicka Musso on the lam. But after a year of hiding, Vicka Musso would be picked up in Scranton, Pennsylvania, at which time Castle would make Alfonso D'Arco acting boss, but in reality, it was Castle running the show from behind the scenes, ordering around two dozen hits while evading capture, even having his architect whacked for complaining about Castle being late on payments. According to sources online, rumor has it that when Sammy the Bull turned government witness, he refused to testify against Gaspipe out of fear Castle would send a hit team to take out Sammy's family like he did the suspected informant and captain in the Lucchese family, Peter Chiodo, after Chiodo pleaded guilty in the famous Mafia Windows case without asking permission from his higher-ups. So Castle sent the hit team to take Chiodo out through little Al Diarco, who was shocked by Castle's request, being that Castle and Chiodo were close friends for many years, but Diarco still carried through with the order. And on May 8, 1991, two hitmen for the Lucchese's caught Chiodo at a Staten Island gas station while working on his car, and they ambushed him with a barrage of gunfire, hitting Chiodo 12 times in the torso, arms, and legs. But miraculously, Chiodo would survive the hit attempt causing Gaspipe to send a message to Chiodo through Chiodo's lawyer that if he were to cooperate with the government in any way, the castle would have Chiodo's wife killed, which according to Chiodo was the last straw causing him to become a government witness despite having denied all previous offers by the FBI to cooperate. In response to Chiodo's cooperation, Chiodo's sister would also be shot multiple times by castle shooter Michael Spinelli or driving through Brooklyn, but also would go on to survive the attempt on her life. After Alphonse, little Al Diarco's failed hit attempt on Chiodo, he grew worried that Casso was upset with him and feared he too would be killed by Casso and Amuso, causing little Al to call FBI agent Robert Martson at his home in Connecticut, stating that he feared for himself and his family's lives because Gaspipe had been taking out whole families of those he suspected of being informants, which was common practice in the Calabrian and Sicilian Mafia back in Italy, but against the rules of the American Mafia, showing the ruthlessness of Anthony Gaspipe Casso and his willingness to do whatever it took to continue his reign with the Lucchese's. Little Al Diarco would go on to join Witsec, and along with Peter Chiodo, would bring down a slew of new murder charges against Casso and Vicka Muso. Also in 1993, while law enforcement were learning how to trace cell phones, Gaspipe would order a hit on fellow Lucchese captain in the Bronx, Stephen Crea, through Lucchese conciliary Frank Lasterino, who authorities were tracking at the time, and discovered numerous calls to a cell phone located in Bud Lake, New Jersey which they suspected to be Gaspipe Castle, who was still on the run. So on a hunch, FBI agent Richard Rudolph arranged for a federal warrant to tap Frank Listerino's phone, where they would pick up Anthony Castle's voice. And on January 19, 1993, federal agents captured Castle, coming out of the shower in a bath towel at a home he was sharing with the mistress in Mount Olive, New Jersey. At the time of the arrest, Agents would find $340,000 in cash, along with FBI paperwork supplied to Casso by his mob cop hit team, along with lists of made men written by Casso disguised as a list of wedding guests, as well as detailed information regarding kickups to Casso and Amuso and the inner workings of the Lucchese family, which would all be used against Casso. While he was being held at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in Manhattan, he would continue to wreak havoc on the streets of New York City, ordering cold-blooded murders of numerous people, including P Peter Chiodo's uncle, Frank Signorino, whose head was wrapped in a black plastic bag and shot multiple times. His body was found frozen solid in the trunk of a car in East New York. Castle also ordered members of the Lucchese's to burn down Chiodo's 95-year-old grandmother's home. On top of all the murders and murder attempts, Castle was also conspiring to escape from prison by having his crew start watching prison buses go to and from prison to court, where he wanted a team to ambush guards and break them free, 
which never happened, but Castle did almost make his escape by walking out the front door of the jail after bribing a guard to clear him through security. But at the last minute, Castle was spotted by another guard and transported back to his cell. Castle was also caught plotting to kill the presiding judge on his case, Eugene Nickerson, in order just to buy himself more time. Prior to Castle's arrest, his partner in crime as well as boss of the Lucchese's, Vic Amuso was picked up by an anonymous tip to the FBI, causing Amuso to be arrested, making Casso temporary boss of the Lucchese's. And as it would turn out, according to Amuso, it was Castle himself who gave up Amuso's location. Upon Amuso learning Castle was behind his arrest, he stripped away Castle's title and ordered Castle to be banished from the Lucchese's and that no other members should associate with them. According to different sources, Amuso was suspicious that Gas Pipe was the one who gave him up, especially when Castle would refuse to use his connections with the mob cops to find out who it was and ultimately concluded that it was Casso in his greedy attempt to take over the family. With Gas Pipe being exiled from his former comrades and set to face trial, at which three of his former closest pals, Chiodo, Asaturo, and Diarco, all lined up as star witnesses to testify against him. Anthony Gas Pipe Castle would make one last attempt to take back control in a shocking twist by reaching out to FBI agent Richard Rudolph and becoming what he claimed to hate the most, a federal informant. Agents immediately flew Castle out to the famous Valachi Suite at Federal Prison Latuna near El Paso, Texas to begin debriefing him. Out of the gate, agents wanted Castle to reveal his law enforcement sources, which he referred to as his crystal ball, to which Castle implicated two NYPD detectives, Stephen Caracappa and Louis Epolito, informing the FBI that the mob cops were on Castle's payroll and that they had committed eight murders for gas pipe on his orders, as well as leaked information from the Federal Organized Crime Strike Task Force, supplying the names of FBI and police informants, resulting in numerous murders. Castle went on to admit to conspiring with Vincent the Chin Giganti to whack John Gotti, resulting in the Frank DeChico car bombing. He confessed to sending a hit team to the home of Federal Prosecutor Charlie Rose with the intentions of murdering him and admitted to trying to take out the judge on his case to buy more time at trial. Castle originally only admitted to 12 murders, which later went up to 24 as feds continued to press him. He was also caught lying about how much money he possessed and about his involvement of the acts of violence against Chiodo's family, making FBI agents skeptical of Castle's revelations prompting the agents to give Castle a lie detector test, which he would fail miserably. And according to Gangland News' Jerry Capisci, FBI agent Greg O'Connell said agents made the decision not to use Castle as a witness in the Valachi suite after listening to Castle gleefully laughing while describing burying a drug smuggling associate alive in the Florida Everglades. O'Connell was later quoted telling Capisci in regards to Castle it gets to a point where somebody is just too evil to put on the stand. Gas Pipe would complete his plea agreement hearing on March 1st, 1994, ultimately pleading guilty to 70 crimes, including extortion, racketeering, as well as 15 murders. And Castle was placed in a witness protection program, but was to stay incarcerated. In 1998, Castle would be kicked out of Witsec for assaulting inmates, bribing guards, and supposedly making false statements regarding Gravano and Diarco's testimony, which Castle alleges was created and altered by prosecutors and agents to fit their narrative in order to secure convictions. For instance, according to Castle, Gravano lied in his cooperation agreement about not having sold drugs when according to Gas Pipe, he was personally supplying him with large amounts of heroin, cocaine, and marijuana for over 20 years. Castle claims prosecutors became upset with him only after he told them he had an FBI agent on his payroll, to which he was told to keep quiet about, and after giving information that was contradictory to the government's star witness against Gambino boss at the time, John Gotti, Sammy the Bull Gravano and claims he was only kicked out of Witsec to silence him from giving the real truth. 
Despite Castle's cooperation, he will be given the maximum sentence permitted under sentencing guidelines, 455 years without the possibility of parole. After his sentencing, Castle would write in a 2006 letter how much he regretted his decision to cooperate and that he hates himself every day for doing so. He talked about how he disgraced his family's heritage and lost the respect of his family and made it a point to say that had the government had honest cooperators from the beginning, things would be different, stating that the government only awards freedom to people who are willing to give prejudice information to win convictions. Whether Castle's claims were true or not, I think it's safe to say prosecutors made the right decision not to allow the sadistic psychopath and gangster Anthony Gaspipe Castle to walk the streets as a free man. Gaspipe Castle would begin serving his 455 year sentence at the ADX Supermax in Florence, Colorado and in March of 2009 would be transferred to the Federal Medical Center at the Federal Correctional Complex in Butner, North Carolina to be treated for prostate cancer and was returned back to ADX Supermax by July of 2009 then moved again in 2013 to a federal halfway house known as the Federal Residential Reentry Management Office in Minneapolis, Minnesota. From there, he'd be transferred to Springfield, Missouri to the United States Medical Center for Federal Prisoners and then transferred two more times to Federal Medical Detention Centers, being treated for multiple issues related to his prostate cancer, including bladder disease, coronary artery disease, kidney disease, hypertension, as well as lung issues from smoking for so many years. Ultimately landing at United States Prison in Tucson, Arizona, and on November 5th of 2020, Casso tested positive for COVID-19, and after being transferred to a hospital for respiratory issues, Anthony Gaspipe Casso passed away on December 15th, 2020 at the age of 78 from complications related to COVID. Castle was already wheelchair bound because of lung issues by the time he was diagnosed with COVID and was rejected compassionate release on November 28, 2020. Director of the Organized Crime Task Force, Ronald Goldstock, was quoted in regards to Castle saying, all the families are in a state of disintegration and the instability allows people like Castle to become powerful figures almost overnight. And another quote by the head of the FBI's New York Criminal Division, William Y. Doran, stated in regards to Casso, he's not brilliant, he's psychotic killer, which pretty much sums up Casso's reign in the Lucchese family. He operated by instilling fear in his competition by proving he would murder anybody and their mother to get what he wanted, completely violating the code of Cosa Nostra in America but demonstrating the reality of how treacherous and evil life can be and showing that even though crime might pay, eventually your deeds will catch up with you. This is the basic outline of Anthony Gaspipe Castle's life in organized crime. And in the future, I'll do some videos and more detailed accounts of some of Gaspipe's crazy stories. If you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe and click the notification bell to receive notifications for all new content. Also, you can now join the Wise Guy TV family by clicking join on the Wise Guy TV homepage and kicking up a small monthly payment to receive members only perks. Thank you for your support and thank you for watching. Till next time, it's Wise Guy TV.